In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use a ratio to compare three quantities. So the word quantities just means um, numbers or amounts. So we've already learned how to use a ratio to compare two numbers. And we learned that we can write that as a fraction. Um, and it has all the same properties that a fraction does. But what's kind of cool about using ratios is that we can compare more than two numbers. We can't write it as a fraction because a fraction just has a numerator and a denominator. So when we're comparing more than two numbers, we're going to have to write it in the form using colons. So let's look at some examples. So here we've got footballs, basketballs, and soccer balls. And it's asking, what is the ratio of footballs to basketballs to soccer balls? So we're going to do this the exact same way that we did when we were comparing two quantities, but this time we're comparing three. So we're going to count the number of footballs, which is eight, four basketballs, and ten soccer balls. So remember, the order is really important when we write a ratio. So we're going to put in the order of footballs, number of basketballs, number of soccer balls. So that would be eight to four to 10. So again, we have to write this with a colon, or we could write in the word two, T-O, but we're not able to write this particular kind of ratio as a fraction like we have others. Okay, so this asks, the next question is, what is the greatest common factor of these three numbers? So remember, common factor means what's the biggest number that will divide evenly into each of these. So the biggest number that will divide into 8, 4, and 10. And that would be 2. So the next question says, can you write this ratio in simplest form? So remember, simplest form is when we have divided um, each number in the ratio, or if it's a fraction, we've divided the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor until we get to a place where we can no longer divide um, anymore. So if we divide each of these by two, eight divided by two is four, four divided by two is two, and 10 divided by two is five. So this ratio written in simplest form is four to two to five. So again, just like we did when we simplified ratios with two quantities, we do the same process for finding the simplest form of a ratio with three quantities. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. So over here, it's asking us, write these ratios in simplest form. So the first one is 25, 30, and 45. So the first thing I'm going to ask myself when I'm trying to find the simplest form is what is the biggest number that will divide into all three of these? So what's the biggest number that will divide into 25, 30, and 45? And that would be 5. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to divide each of these by 5. So remember, whatever you do to 1, you have to do to all three. So... I'm going to divide 25 by 5. That's going to give me 5. Then I'm going to divide 30 by 5. And that's going to give me 6. And then I'm going to divide 45 by 5. And that's going to give me 9. So the simplest form of this ratio is 5 to 6 to 9. So here we have 16, 12, and 24. So the greatest common factor is 4. That's the biggest number that will divide into all three of them. And remember, it's really important to keep them in the same order. Very, very important. So I'm going to divide each of these by 4 and put them in the corresponding spots. So 16 divided by 4 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 24 divided by 4 is 6. 
So the simplest form of that would be 4 to 3 to 6. So again, doing the same thing as we did when we had two numbers, only now we have three numbers in our ratio. So if we come over here, look and see if you can see what's different about these type of problems. So as you notice, this time, they're just asking us to find an equivalent ratio. That means it doesn't have to be the simplest form. It just needs to be a ratio that's equivalent, meaning it means the same thing. So they give you one piece of the puzzle, and they want you to figure out the missing pieces. So always start with what you know to figure out what you don't know. So what we know is that this 7 turned into a 21. So we need to say to ourselves, what did I either multiply or divide by 7 to get to 21? Well, I know I multiplied by something because it got bigger. So then I'm going to say, what did I multiply by 7 to get 21? And that would be 3. So if I multiplied this by 3, I have to multiply everything else by 3 too. So I'm going to say 3 times 3 and put it here. Notice that I'm keeping everything in the same order. That would be 9. And 4 times 3 would be 12. Notice how I kept everything in the same order. So an equivalent ratio for this would be 12 to 21 to 9. So remember to find equivalent ratios, we're either multiplying everything by the same number or dividing each part of the ratio by the same number. So let's look at this one. Again, we're going to use what we know to figure out what we don't know. So what I know is that this 3 became a 15. So I'm saying to myself, what did I do to this 3 to get to 15? Well, I know I multiplied by something because it got bigger. 15 is bigger than 3. So what did I multiply by 3 to get 15? That would be 5. So if I multiplied 3 by 5 to get 15, that means I have to multiply each of these by 5. So 10 times 5 is 50. And 5 times 5 is 25. So again, I kept them in the same order and created an equivalent fraction.